And uh, we're live. Uh, hello, everyone. Hi, LinkedIn. Thank you so much for uh, being here with us today to talk uh, about how NFTs boost the creator economy, because indeed that is uh, the topic for tonight. Um, uh, my name is Karen. I'm moderating tonight's uh, event, and uh, we're going to delve into the topic uh, today with our wonderful panelists. Uh, Stan Novi, the CEO and founder of uh, Passenger, uh, Frank Pagano, an author and advisor to many, many projects, Solomon Lopez, director at ESAP Lab, multimedia artist and a creative director at Arte Multimedia, Matthew Hutchins, the CEO and co-founder at Block Ape Scissors, and Dennis Smaliani, co-founder at Scotty Bim IO. Thank you so much for uh, being with us today. I'm reminding our viewers on LinkedIn that you can always leave your comments in the comment section. You can address them individually to all of our uh, all of our panelists, and we will make sure to ask them at the end during the Q&A session that uh, we will hold like, in the last uh, 10 to 15 minutes. And uh, let's kick off the uh, event, uh, the creator economy. Uh, currently, the established creator economy is estimated to be worth over $100 billion, and uh, it is on the growth trajectory that could see it reach into trillions in just a couple of years. Uh, at least that is the estimates. And in the past year, more and more creators have been jumping into the NFT trend from launching their NFT collections uh, to launching their own entire projects. And uh, why wouldn't they? As the decentralization of the creator economy is putting the financial control back, to, uh, back into the hands of uh, content creators, at least in theory. So we're gathered here today to discuss the intricacies of using NFTs uh, by content creators. And Stan, uh, my first question goes to you. Um, do NFTs really democratize and demonopolize the creator economy? Do you truly think that uh, the monopoly of traditional social media giants can be disrupted? And does it need to be disrupted? So hmm, I believe actually that technology never change the world, you know, and never disrupt anything. The, the, the human, if they decide to support uh, one or another technology, they can change or disrupt it or change the market or make a revolution. So we can speak about all the previous technology. And uh, <clears throat> if we decide, of course, the NFT and the Web3, what we now have in our hands, uh, we can have one another chance, ch chance to rethink, uh, you know, rethink um, the economy, the creative economy, how we work with uh, our assets. But without our support and without still without governmental support and legalization of all these parts and protection of all these uh, rights, you know, like rights for protected digital assets, we do not can do a lot with the new technologies. So, but it's in one side. In another side, of course, if if we if we look at these uh, NFTs, what they allow us is just to easier and better way how we can uh, move our digital assets, how we can stock it, how we can change ownership, how we can protect ownership. It just it just make the way it's uh, more easy. Let's say if we create the environment where we support the society, the governments protect this and allow people to use NFT as the real digital assets and move them as the real digital assets. Speaking about creators and the media content or speaking about estate, real estate, right? When you uh, NFT can be um, like your, or represent your real assets, you know, not only digital. So what, what, what I want to say first is, is we should take it not as a grant, but we should take it as a good chance to, to, to rethink the market, to rethink how we, uh, how we want to work, how we want the social media looks like in the next decade. 
So, and I think we kind of catch this chance uh, as the movement of the Web3 and uh, the communities grow quite fast. It's comparable with the internet growing even faster, right? So, um, yes, we should take it as a chance and we should take the best uh, options to, to, to rethink and revolt uh, about how the market should work. So uh, about the support directly, what I truly believe about, you say, democratize, right? How it can democratize. Um, today, creators, uh, as much as they depend from the brands or label, tomorrow they can in the same way depend only of the audience or their reputation. Let's say today musicians was supported by the labels and then they take 50, 70, 40% for the whole lifelong or uh, they cut the profit of the musicians. So today we have a lot of the project when you get supported directly from your audience and then audience get profit only from your uh, exactly mu music album but not from the all your activities in the life, what you will do. So I think it's open for creators to have better connection, more deep connection with the audience, who they create for, and be dependent on them. You know, I, I truly believe the creators or influencers, they, it's kind of new social class, new deputies. So, and they really can influence and they should depend on the audience, not on the brands who pay the money, not on the... Um, yeah, on the labels um, who also like support them in the, in the beginning and then you should all your life depend on them. Yeah, in this way, it should democratize our uh, medias. And the, the second aspect is also important is about how it can democratize social media. It's because today our assets, our attention and our uh, like followers, our media content, they do not truly be, belong to us, right? Maybe in terms and conditions somehow, but uh, actually you cannot just easy quit from social media if you want, if you're a creator. It's, this is asset is stuck in this media. Some of this is stuck in your reputation and people will follow you, but not everything. And with the new Web3 social medias and with this implication with NFTs, so all things, like all what we can see, the media content, the followers, the like, the history of our search, the, the personal data that we share with the media, all of this we can take with us. And in this way, of course, it's make the social media more democratized because if they scary that audience can move all these assets from them very easy because the key uh, the key word here is fast, that's NFT and this technology can allow us to, to move our assets more faster and more easier. So, of course, it will make them more dependent on the audience and they will not do stuff just, just because they decide with the small groups, you know, of uh, like editors or the small groups of algorithm developers uh, how this media should work. They will more care about the community and the users. So, yeah, in, in this belief, in the, in the nutshell, yeah, I try to summarize, it's, uh, in one way, it's just a chance. It's not a grant. It will not change anything if we do not use this chance as a right, in the right way. We do not uh, rethink it. And, and the second, of course, it's give us more easier way to, con to, to control our attention, our audience, and the social media as well. And I believe and I want to be the part of this wave who, who support these changes. I want to take this chance um, and use it in the right way. Uh, thank you, Stan. Uh, Frank, my next question goes to you and uh, delving a bit deeper into the topic of, of NFTs as a tool for and a use word democratization uh, of, of the space. Do NFTs allow for more equality in the creator economy? Do they provide creators outside of uh, mainstream? So be it from the third world countries, uh, from like uh, disadvantaged backgrounds, etc., with more opportunities to be seen and heard. Thank you very much, Karin. Very quickly, and I think uh, this goes well with the answer that Stan gave. So I would say in general terms, yes, because there's uh, less access and the NFT protects the IP for both the seller and the buyer. But I mean, the short answer is we need also the marketplace that enables that. So a couple of days ago, Apple announced that the NFTs traded via the apps bought in their stores. They're going to take a 30% cut on it. I mean, 
not even mafia takes that sort of money or uh, you know google does the same thing i mean they takes 45 they take 45 percent of the profits of any creator so i think nft per se alone will not do the magic so we need also marketplaces blockchain powered that have zero access things uh, obstacle and uh, that allow like open or mintable or or uh, whatever else these marketplaces will need to replace the current social media marketplaces which are which are just extractive i mean we'll live in a world where big tech is taking a big chunk of the profits of any creator and that needs to to end the um, so the margin of the world will be given access thanks to a system and infrastructure that is blockchain powered without that nfts are worthless and i'm very thank you that's yeah i I can see that but that is like very uh precise uh and i guess we can talk more about it because it is like very interesting at the end uh to go back to that and uh bring that up to discussion in the panel um and now i i know i know that solomon uh, is um it has to leave us in uh, a bit um so I want to address a couple of questions to him um, first so that we can then proceed uh, with the rest of our panel. Um, Solomon, my first question to you is, does the NFT boom make more artists join the creator economy? It feels like it does, but does it from your perspective? And does it change the value of art and the role of an artist in the society? Uh, and the way that an artist is perceived uh, as like as a profession uh, and if yes in what way thank you for having me on board and uh, uh, good afternoon from from paris uh, from my perspective i was uh, really engaged uh, from let's say uh, 2015, where where I was uh, developing the project Hartisk Museum, a, a museum of uh, digital art based in the preservation, conservation, and the storage of uh, unique uh, files of digital files. I was already understood that as understand, understand that that the most important thing that we have in our culture, in our society, is those are those things that are intangible. And the digital is like that. It's 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 intangible. I mean, we cannot touch the, the pixels. But at the same time, we have to trust in the technology. We have to trust in how and what the screen is telling to us. I have to, you know, to to be sure that all the pixels that are in my screen now are, are really true. Your T-shirt is green, and the T-shirt of the rest of people are those colors. So, uh, and at that point, we we didn't um, produce something to really get this value to those assets it was the, the very um, at, at, at the moment and it's something that is i mean it's coming from from the dta the, the digital art is not it's not new people think now in the community that all that the stuff that we are producing now is some kind of new art but it's not it's not a new art it's something that is already done uh, 30 years ago but for sure, this technology is uh, provoking like um, more sense in the scene. I, I feel myself like uh, in this period, and it was uh, at the same time uh, that the pandemic was taking place, uh, that people were like more sensible to to my practice, and it's, and that's thanks to to this notion of connecting uh, digital art with an economy. Uh, telling that, I mean that it's the very first time on history that the art is belonging to the same medium of money, because the, the unique difference in between an NFT and uh, an Ethereum uh, token is the standard that are uh, that are you know um, um, organizing the, the the process of of each one of them. So it is the very first time. So it is because we are all the time connecting NFTs with money. Um, it's a very risky uh, perspective because uh, um, it's, uh, you know, as, as you know, with this boom, uh, the money, we were all the time talking about money and money and money and money. Uh, we produce like hell, marketplaces like hell. We, we began to produce, take templates and just connect it with a smart contract and wow, like a, like a, some kind of, um, of, of, of plants of, uh, of, uh, of marketplaces. And now we are coming back one more time to the fact that there's no value. 
one more time, because there is a thousand and thousand and thousand and thousand of content that we are producing. So what will be the limit? What will be the final balance between uh, those aspects? And I think that the balance, uh, one more time, I think that creators, uh, critics, um, you know, the cultural uh, sphere should come back to do this thing one more time and take, and take the risk of filtering what's the good content and what's not the good content. But for sure, the, um, the, the fact that now you can, with the open mouth, you can say that one file of your, of your filmography or one website of your webography, web, web, whatever, make uh, half a cost, a real cost, and you have the, the tools for give them those idea, this idea and to be paid uh, of this, I, for sure, has totally changed the perspective of a digital artist today. Um, but at the same time, as I said, it's really a, it's a risky moment. I think that the most important thing that we have to do is just to really put the emphasis in those projects that are really understanding the medium of NFTs. Uh, if, if not, we are only just using the technique in, in terms of, okay, we are using NFT as a, as a protocol of, of data certification. And, it is, and on the other side, we have artists that are working with the medium of the NFT as it is. It's the same that, okay, it's the same of having my website on the web, like my portfolio, or or it is the same to make a net art. It's totally different. The medium is exactly the same, but the final product is another one. So I'm more in that direction. I think that we have to highlight those projects that are really putting the boundaries about uh, those connections between the medium and the, and the, and the concept of production. Um, for sure, we will keep safe the, 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 the stage that we finally have as artists in the society, as digital artists in the society. Um, thank you. And uh, I guess a bit building up uh, on that question um, about opportunities that Web3 provides artists, like does it provide artists with more unique opportunities and ideas, I guess, to cross boundaries between perhaps industries and now here i'm talking about you know uh science and 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 data uh and it, integration does it like provide a way to uh for like for less separation between arts and sciences yeah it's something that uh that it was at the same in parallel that my, my personal evolution as an artist i I'm, I'm working now very hard with biotechnology and now I'm working really hard in the connection in between biotechnology and blockchain technologies and Web3. Um, the connections are more clear than ever in my case, because now, as we can imagine, the Web3, like a song some kind of fractal of information, is the, exactly the same metaphor that we have in nature. Nature is growing up through fractals. So for me, it's the, the perfect moment for connecting biotechnology with blockchain technologies, because everything is like fitting in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a proper way. So now I'm working very hard with DNA. We are working as well. Um, I could I could publicly say that so now we are in collaboration with different foundations about uh, longevity. We are creating the first um, alive NFT connected with a with a, um, a live culture cell uh, environment that is taking the, the amount of, of alive cells in real time and it's uh, injecting this information into a dynamic NFT for having the price depending on the amount of cells alive in the culture. So this is one example of where the boundaries are. I mean, I think that in this direction, we will be totally able in a couple of years to really connect uh, the physical world with the metaverse and the Web3. And it is because thank, it is thanks to absolutely to the notion of the, the Web3 is this kind of uh, decentralized ecosystem that is going against this like a, a, a epicentral uh, metaphor that we had in the past uh, internet, you know, with this notion of, okay, we have a server represented by by a businessman or girl, uh, whatever. Now, everything is like more flat in many different ways. I always say that we we have been flying, you know, in the clouds like Icaro, you know, and we burn our, 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 our wheels and now we fall down to the earth and now we are blocking, we are moving blocks together. So, and I think it's, it's, a, it's a very nice metaphor to really uh, involve people in this connection in between bio, science, and technology. And at the same time, uh, also for the ecosystem of technology and, um, and science, it's a super good opportunity to, uh, at the same time, make people more concerned about those topics because are very 
challenging one to talk about longevity, to talk about to how we can face the Asian illness and many different ways to make to make the world a better place to, to live, and also for sure to to go against and to foresee and all the all the risks that we are now affording with the with the climate change. And uh, sincerely, I think that is the is the, the first time I I can, I can really find a technology that is very very concerned about those topics, and it's con we are connecting blockchain technology with all those topics, and I think it's very powerful because um, art it was art. Um, there was no functionality. Now the word functionality is also involved in the production of digital art, thanks to the collections of NFTs. Uh, you have to give to the community some kind of functionality. It's the first time art should give you something to do. You know, it was always something in a passive way. So th that's very important as well to, to have that in mind. I'm trying to do my best in terms of okay, I have to take advantage of that uh, new notion of offering something to do to the to the community, to the collectors, or to the people who is following up my work. Um, you know, in that direction, I'm trying to, to put my efforts in something that could help us as a society. And it's the role of science and, um, and technology that's going to be like very, very, very important in the, you know, in the top of the iceberg. Uh, so for sure, I think that we have found the technology that is properly understanding the metaphor of bio and science and now we can absolutely connect all the pieces into one scene that is the connection between biotech and blockchain technologies thank you solomon and thank you so much for being with us today and for your answers thank you thank and, you very much Thank you. Uh, Matthew, my next question uh, I want to address to you, uh, and uh, it would be about the gaming community. What role uh, NFTs play in the gaming community? Because uh, like traditional, uh, by uh, t t t t kind of traditional players and uh, gamers, uh, starting from you know casual ones to esports professional, uh, they have been denouncing the implementation of NFTs and similar blockchain uh, technologies within the space. And it isn't just consumers, that also comes to uh, a lot of um, game developers. Uh, why do gamers uh, hate NFTs? And what could change their minds uh, <laughs> as, as, as a huge group among the creator economy that moves it? <laughs> Such a big question, such a great question as well. Um, firstly, thanks everyone for, for, for having me. And um, how do I follow up on Solomon's uh, amazing um, discussion just then? What a, what a brilliant um, addition. Um, so I think, I mean, we, we have a lot of work to do uh, in the Web3 space, especially with blockchain gaming. Um, I mean, we, we see a lot of hype cycles traditionally in Web3, so I've been in the space for about four years myself, um, uh, doing various different things. Um, but traditionally, what you see with, with any sort of um, major expansion, whether it has, um, you know, a technological impact or an economic impact, is you have these, these hype cycles. Um, and the hype cycles create a big gap. So you have a gap of what's being used, and you have a gap of, of, of where things can potentially be. And somewhere in the middle, is enormous opportunity where bad actors can exploit. And this is the problem that we face, is that there have been a lot of bad actors who are clever, um, who take advantage of situations, of people, uh, and then what happens is people get burnt, and then entire communities start to develop opinions and what we call stigmas around the situations. So we, we, have, uh, we have a lot of problems and stigmas to overcome in order to win you know, the traditional gaming community over. Um, and uh, to be honest, I have to side with them in, in, in a lot of these because um, we as a space need to raise the bar, you know, significantly in, in, in what it is that we're doing and offering in order to, um, to get mass adoption. Uh, so, so these stigmas still exist uh, until those things are sort of resolved and uncovered. So to, to take a step, you know, deeper down and drill down into what they are, you sort of heart start to look at, you know, I guess the stigmas around um, X to earn gaming or, or play to earn or move to earn or whatever it might be. 
um, a lot of them are just flashy buzzwords uh, that people are just sort of, you know, selling um, as, as snake oil or vaporware that are, that are sitting behind. There might not actually be anything but smoke and mirrors, which is, um, which is unfortunate and a lot of people have been burnt. So that these stigmas exist um, around X2N gaming and some of that relates to okay, it might be too, it might cost too much to play. Um, it uh, it might be relative to you know exploitation of of people, um, you know, incentivizing them to slave over a game for an opportunity to earn a living, which is basically just selling a dream to poor people. Um, which is really really, you know, when you actually look at it, it's uh, it's not very nice. Um, and there's some of the core issues associated with the ex to earn gaming side of things, you know, relate to modern slavery. They relate to Ponzi and, and pyramid schemes um, or, or a zero same, some solution model, which is basically like if you're not early into it, well, there's a pretty good chance you're going to lose. Um, and uh, it's actually quite a tough challenge to fix with the X to earn model. So I think it's very important that people try and move away from this, you know, kind of uh, label or hype cycle because it's something that ends in tears either for you um, as a creator or uh, for, you know, the public, which is just going to exacerbate the problem and stigma with that side of things. But in terms of NFTs, um, there's obviously controversy around the environmental impact um, that is associated with uh, with NFTs being created. Um, <clears throat> People have been labelled eco terrorists and those sorts of things, uh, and there's you know concern of overspending on game assets um, that could be worthless you know for the next day, which is actually you know the real issue I would think with NFTs. So you know Ethereum's gone to uh, to proof of stake now, so the um, the actual environmental impact and cost uh, of energy is now ninety nine point one percent reduced, uh, which is a big win. Gas still hurts the wallet a lot, <laughs> but um, you know the the issue here is is around um, I guess more of a control mechanism from the game studios now um, because that that aspect of um, of what the, what it really costs to to partake in a game, um, what it costs to transact in a game is is more controllable uh, at least on Ethereum than it was. Um, Binance Smart Chain or BNB Chain, as it is now, uh, is is significantly reduced um, and has, has always been uh, relatively cost efficient in, in that in that state, um, and it's also never gone down, which is which is pretty great. <laughs> um, so there are options out there, but there's I think the, those stigmas still need to be overcome and uh, and addressed on on a lot of the the public and prominent chains. Um, and you know we, we need to we need to instead of reacting um to, to some of these uh situations we absolutely need to you know draw draw on the facts um and be objective uh, look at look at the situation so you know people believe that nft creation cultivation usage is um is worse than gaming pcs uh and the actual fact is is that gaming pcs draw significantly more power in the world um, than NFTs ever could. <laughs> um, this is just a fact. And, um, but, you know, getting back to the heart of the issue with NFTs, they usually have a volatile value. Um, that needs to be addressed. Uh, so don't put out your NFTs with a, a massive, you know, buy-in uh, and a, a huge barrier for entry in order to, to get your players in. It's only gonna end in, in drama and, um, there's, there's a lot of subsets to that. Uh, it's, a, it's an entire topic on its own for another day. But specifically with NFT blockchain gaming, um, you know, they're, the gaming community has been burnt. Um, they, they've been taken advantage of many, 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 many times by lots of different events, situations. Um, and they're, you know, once burnt, twice shy. That's the situation that they've got. Um, Gamers don't trust developers to do the right thing. Uh, and the fact is most NFT assets are drastically overpriced, um, even, even in the existing market. Uh, and 
a lot of game models ask users to pay for the game, then insult them by asking for more money for NFTs. It's just, uh, it doesn't, it's, it doesn't sit well. Most of these guys are smart or girls or them, <laughs> you know, there's these, these people are clever. They they know what their time and attention is worth. Don't abuse it. Um, so in this, in this state of affairs, um, we have highly intelligent people that want to be entertained. That's, that's the hardest market to win over um, because, you know, these people are very well learned. They're very well read. They understand what value is. Um, so we've got to stay away from, you know, stigmas uh, in order to reframe the situation and put it into a, a much more palatable context. So what does that mean? Well, a couple of examples. Uh, I won't take up too much time because I feel like my segment is starting to get a bit bit thick. But, um, you know, it's really, really important that when we're building an NFT integrated game uh, that we stay away from things like, um, you know, drawing any relevance to it being a money-making strategy. It absolutely must be relevant um, and, and related purely to a value-add mechanism for gamers in order to own the assets that they're working and building and leveling and all those sorts of things um, in order to draw value at a later date that's transferable. It's so simple. Don't make it about the money. If you if you made a really good game, and you can you can leverage interoperable assets in between this game and another game and all these different places, you you won't have to think about the money. But if you've priced it out of the market and people get annoyed, yeah, you're going to be walking over your shoulder worrying about money because no one's going to buy or play your game. Um, so. There, it's just an added layer of financial complexity that people need to consider. Um, don't price, you know, your NFT package or your um, game and NFT package higher than than what you're already asking for 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 the game equitably. Like people are clever; they'll they'll look at they'll look at it. They don't want to be exploited, um, and they want to use NFTs in a situation where it's a value add uh, for their experience or for their future potential reward um, rather than being, you know, a pawn in someone else's game. So it's very, very important that um, we make sure that we design systems um, that do not rely on hype cycles or, you know, acquisition cycles and, and all these sorts of things that that are dependent upon, um, you know, these stigmas that, that people are upset with. And we have a future that is leveraged um, by player economies that are driven by communities and they're driven by incentivization strategies that everyone agrees on, um, everyone hopes to do. And as, um, as uh, Solomon pointed out just before, that fractal uh, side of things, when it's done well, uh, all of those different elements are going to start to diversify into different business models. And that's where we're going to start to see some real magic happen. So, uh, We've just got to stay away from the stigmas and we've got to create stuff that adds value. It's super simple. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, Dennis, um, you're next. Um, does the rising popularity of NFTs uh, among creators help with the blockchain mass adoption? Uh, we kind of already touched upon that a bit. And perhaps you can share some uh, good examples. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, absolutely. Actually, um, talking about the general mass adoption in the blockchain was uh, always the purpose of some kind of a um, mind-blowing events. You know, like someone just uh, bought the Bitcoin, it like grown 100 times and people are, wow, it was Bitcoin. I was able to earn like 100x. Okay, that's interesting. You know, that's something that catches people up for the moment and at the same time when the you know blockchain was you know strictly associated with the bitcoin with like coins tokens all of that uh, i just saw people a little bit got um, you know got a little bit tired about all of that stuff and it was like okay boring again one other coin you know just 
not interesting, you know. But when the NFTs uh, come to the game, uh, we saw um, another big uh, splash of the interest from the people to the NFTs because it was another interesting stuff that, uh, again, you know, people may do some money on it at the very beginning, of course. Um, and um, it was something very interesting, something, some new approach, some new application of the blockchain tech. So yeah, that's why it was really, um, it was really uh, interesting for the people to realize I mean, what's going on, how it's, how it can be, you know, some, some, some pictures is being sold in the blockchain. Well, I mean, what's this? Like, how it can be? And um, yeah, that created some um, additional, um, some additional, uh, even, you know, let's say buying pressure to the NFTs, some additional events, some additional uh, stuff. You know, there are a lot of even conferences regarding NFTs only without the blockchain tech, without the um, tokens, just about the NFTs. So, uh, yeah, I guess uh, definitely we have a pretty great splash of mass adoption uh, due to the uh, NFTs. And, um, yeah, talking about the examples, um, we mentioned some of them. And um, what I see that um, this creator economy that we were talking about uh, was evolving pretty fast. And if uh, from the very beginning, it was just some kind of artist, right? Some, uh, someone who just did some cool pics and uh, sold it in the, uh, in the blockchain. Right now, we, se we see a lot, you know, a lot of different applications and different um, ways for people to um, use NFTs. And it's um, being treated like the like the some kind of a um, box, you know, where you can just put anything in this NFT, in this package, uh, this, you know, Docker or something like that. And actually people started to um, use NFTs for a lot of, a lot of things. Let's say um, about the science, it was uh, really interesting to, um, to hear some thoughts about that. Um, and talking about the science, I know that d data scientists uh, actually um, sometimes use NFTs uh, to sell trained um, trained ne neural net networks. Yeah, uh, to sell the uh, data packs uh, for you know for training the, these neural networks and so on and so on. It's just the packages that you can uh, put anything and you can sell it in all the blockchains. It's fine and it's great actually and. I uh, really hope that people will, um, you know, upgrade uh, their um, feeling, uh, their uh, understanding of the NFTs from the pictures or some media content into something much bigger than this, into something um, that they can just put any kind of information, any kind of data, pack it into the NFT, and, uh, and that's all. And uh, you know, you're able to trade it, you're able to use it everywhere, and so on. And uh, what um, especially we do uh, in Skydebeam, we are helping people to do this cross-chain. And uh, mass adoption was pretty simple when it was only Ethereum there on, on the market. And uh, when we saw a lot of other blockchains coming there, like BSC, Polygon, uh, Avalanche, I know, IMX, Solana, others, uh, Cosmos, um, we just saw that um, different companies utilize absolutely different approaches to uh, create this mass adoption, and they're targeting their own blockchains for now. So I see that all of them are working uh, pretty hard on this mass adoption, and they do it a little bit different way. Let's say... Um, Ethereum is being, um, you know, perceived as the uh, some kind of a solid, uh, like big, the first blockchain, and people there are usually just some big whales or DeFi guys or something like that. And um, we are, I mean, and, and we see a lot of people coming to Ethereum uh, when they uh, you know, started to trade the big amount of funds and so on. If we're talking about the um, Polygon, if you're talking about the BSC, it's something lightweighted, which is um, perfectly fit for uh, 
for, for the gaming experience, for all of that. If you're talking about the Solana, I see the great splash of the NFTs in Solana uh, as well, because, um, you know, we have perfect marketplaces there. We have perfect ideas and pretty simple interface. So um, mass adoption in the uh, NFTs is definitely, uh, you know, not something new. It's something that we uh, experience for pretty long period of time. And uh, if you're talking about the examples, I see a huge NFT community in the gaming industry. So Matthew uh, started talking about that and about the why you know gamers kind of you know, hate the, the NFTs. The thing is that um, crypto, crypto community is, uh, you know, we have our own uh, ideas and we have our own opinion how NFTs should be used. You know, we, we see the uh, cool applications for them. We see how it should be used in the real world. We see how it can be done, uh, you know, in, in, in the gaming. Even in the gaming, we can use NFTs as the, um, you know, as the items, as, as the, um, you know, parts of the, uh, you know, clothes of the uh, of, of the creatures of the heroes and so on and heroes itself you know a lot of uh, uh, use cases and um, big companies um, sometime uh, so sometimes utilize that in the absolutely different approach so that's why uh, crypto community and crypto guys uh, sometimes do not understand the value of that why they do it this way so instead of making let's say some skins some uh, items, putting it in, into the NFTs and applying it inside the game, they just sell some NFTs with some pictures and that's all. Again, it's again about this understanding of the NFTs. When we will start, um, when we will understand that NFTs is a container, you can put everything there and uh, use it in the blockchains, uh, use it like in all the chains, use it in a lot of uh, different ways, again, in the metaverses. and that will change a lot because for now again it's more like some kind of a cool media so sounds like that thank you dennis um and stan uh, going back a bit uh to creators uh how can uh, creators make money in a decentralized creator economy and how is it different from web to monetization tools? And how, like, how can you monetize the creator economy through NFTs? Um, I, I will not compare the same models, right? Because they can use the same that's in web to the same monetization models, but it's in more easier, fast and more ownership uh, in, in the assets that was spoke before. But what is unique for me, it's the new layers of um, assets that before was invisible and belong only to corporation. And now we can kind of pretend to the ownership of this asset. What I speak about is uh, two things. The first is attention of in other people and attention itself as the uh, value, attention as the asset. So before... And the second is data. So before, the attention as the asset belonged only to the corporation and to some influencers because they grab a lot of attention of people. They try to monetize it. They, they have this asset. It's kind of belong to, to, to them, but they cannot materialize it. You know, they, they cannot get a form. It was only one form. The form is your social account. So, and today... Uh, I believe in Web3 and what we do in Passenger, uh, it's uh, uh, we monetize and capitalize attention and not in only current attention, but in the, also the futures of attention. So let's say you... Stan, you... Oh, can yourself. you hear me? Yeah. Yes. You cannot hear me just now, but before you can, right? Or you can... For only a few seconds. Oh, we can hear you now, but we couldn't hear you yet previously. Okay. So what, what I spoke about is is the attention and how the all the people now, not only the corporation, can capitalize it and can invest in it and can earn something with uh, this attention. Let's say you create the content, and this content start to gain some likes and shares of people, right? It's already have some, and it will have something in the future. So in this 
way in these layers, you can understand the real value. It's not only rarity of the picture that you create or not only the demand that some people want to buy it, but it's real value. It's a real people who will see this content in future. So in this way, if you can, uh, with NFT, you can very fast change ownership, right? So if you can take some assets that's on the growing stage, like a capital, like a startup, like a currency. So each media content become a currency, each media content become an asset that you can invest before it have the peak of the popularity. So in this way, this opened the real dimension of the real value of the NFT, not just the created value or the demand that you create with the marketing or something, but <coughs> the, the real value and its attention of the people. And the second is uh, the data. The data was the... Uh, capital that's belonged to corporation all these years and actually the 95 I don't know percent of the capitalization of the top five companies like Facebook Amazon is the ability to uh, explore and extract the data and use it to monetize so imagine that today that every human who create the content they can own the data that this content produce I will give an example. Let's say I will create the content that's uh, my opinion about subject A is very bad. I hate this subject. And then a lot of people like my opinion. And they say, yes, we also hate this subject. For say, like this subject who started the war, let's say. Uh, will not uh, <laughs> tell it's like a Volandamur. Better than not speak. So, and, and, and then if I create this content and thousands of people like it and agree with me, I own not only the potential attention that it will have, but I also own the link of the data that these 10,000 people think the same. And if I own this content, not corporation, but I, in future, if someone wants to know who people hate this subject or want to target the advertisement to them, so me become the one of the block to... Uh, the, the, the business will go through this block. So if they want to get, okay, we want people who like this, who hate this, and who live there. And the, all these blocks is the content. That's how the social media gain the data. They just collect the data from the a lot of pieces of content. So, and today we can decentralize it. And people who create this content can become the, they can get always the profit when there's some data needed by someone, by the business, by another people. So this is the second dimension that's uh, open up and uh, able to, to be belong to the people who create this content. First is potential attention, and the second is the data. And the rarity, uh, of course, it's what's already explored pretty well in the NFT. I mean, the real rarity, it's uh, not only the picture you create, you can create 1,000 and other pictures like this, right? Uh, but the value, if it is the first tweet, if it is the first um, document of something, if it is the, 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 the media content of the person who already cannot produce the content because he died, let's say. So so the rarity is the third uh, very native dimension that we also can own and explore. So, But this is, we speak about collectibize, okay, some, some rarity stuff we can ask from another people because they never will repeat it. Yeah, but we targeted and passenger in this two first dimension. How we can buy the content that will become popular to gain some to to gain some profit in future, and the second, how we can extract the data from the content. Some content produce the data, some content produce not valuable data. So in in the our platform, we try to produce as much content with the valuable data as it possible, and give to people options to earn on this, to 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 allow them to create this content. If, if if you understand what you mean, maybe you can ask me some question. Um, yes, thank you. And actually building on uh, your question and uh, I mean, your answer and uh, you mentioning brands and how NFTs uh, like, and, and Web3 allows uh, creators to kind of free themselves of the limits and uh, of, of, of the brands. I want to ask Frank next uh kind of to, to 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 look at it from the other side what does a decentralized creator economy mean for brands uh is it 
ultimately a good thing for them or uh, does it provide them with like less monetary leverage over creators who they, they kind of used to control through uh, through various um, uh, cooperation tools? Oh, sure, Karin. Thank you very much. Super quickly, it's a tremendous tool for brands to engage their super fans. Number one, they sell, they can sell meta products instead of products. So separating their growth from the supply chain, cogs and whatever else. In the future, 10% of sales will be uh, created through uh, uh, NFTs, but that will account to 25% of uh, EBITDA, so bottom line. So much more profitable, much more sustainable. The problem for brands is if they have anything to say at all. Otherwise, you know, NFTs are not useful. The second thing is, uh, as Stan was saying, the direct link with users. I will know as a brand my super fans. I will nurture that opportunity bypassing e-commerce and social media. Thank goodness. So it's going to be the death of that extractive economy of uh, current, current social media. So NFTs, in a nutshell, is a tremendous tool for brands to grow and engage their super fans. Oh, yeah, I, I have nothing to add because that is <laughs> true. And we can see that. Uh, and uh, 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 perhaps uh, like one, uh, one, one question on top of that, do you think that like Ethereum merge, like truly we, we can see, I, I guess, from the news that uh, already more brands uh, after the merge are coming to, uh, to, 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 to the industry. What are your projections? Do you think we're going to be seeing more integrations? Well, for sure. I think, I mean, if anything, and apologies, I'm a Gen X, so I'm very materialistic. If anything, Ethereum is cheaper now, so more brands will come because uh, it's it's more convenient to use it. Today, according to Ernest Young, 95% of NFTs travel through Ethereum or side chains like Polygon. So the battle has already been, you know, they already won the battle of the NFTs, especially dedicated to business. So yes, the answer is more and more brands will come. I mean, they need to if they want to survive. And thank you, Matthew. I have another question about the future uh, uh, for you. What, in your opinion, is the future of the creator economy? Um, is it going to be uh, embraced? Uh, oh, oh, sorry, of oh, 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 the future of the metaverse in the creator economy. Is it going to be embraced uh, similarly to NFTs? And how can content creators benefit from it, from the metaverse? Great question. I'm going to draw on a couple of things here. So I really like what Dennis said about uh, the NFTs being a container. So when I was in Valencia about a week and a half ago presenting for NFT show Europe, um, I drew on on the fact that NFTs are in fact, you know, portable databases, basically. So you, you, you can you can leverage into them and you can leverage out of them, you can hit them with smart contracts, you can do anything that derives value that is provable on chain. Um, so one of the things that's vitally important that people do is to make sure that the NFTs that you're buying or that you're utilizing actually have on chain data. So important because ninety four percent of them do not. So that's probably the first one. Um, and, and what Frank said about brands, so valid and valuable. Um, we're working with a lot of brands. Um, some of them I can't tell you who they are. <laughs> but uh, there's there's so much interest in the space um, in terms of Web3 native uh, NFTs and also the metaverse. I mean, the metaverse is the is the big buzzword everyone's throwing around, everyone's still trying to figure out what it is, um, arrive at a consensus of the, the pure definition, uh, I think beyond what Meta stated. Um, what's valuable, I think, realistically, is that the, the Metaverse is an immersive virtual space um, where people can work, transact and play. That's, that's my version of it. Um, I've just come up with it then. So the point is, What's what's really important is that it is um, it's a globalized space um, using any interface. So whether you're using AR, VR, desktop, phone, um, you should be able to interact with it. 
So all of these different mediums um, and the fact that it can, it doesn't necessarily have to be, but it can be backed by blockchain and, and NFTs and decentralized technologies um, has a new layer that we can perceive of value. So people are still trying to wrap their head around what this means. Uh, there's still elements of, of it being sort of associated with, you know, a, a money grab, you know, type things. But every single new productized movement or emerging market starts off as a money grab. This is just life. <laughs> so the dot coms, you know, everyone shot it down. The internet's dead in 2000. I saw an article on that the other day. It was hilarious. Um, it's it's here. It's it's going to be here to stay. What we need is is better protocols, regulations, etc. Anyway, I, I I am going on a tangent. The point is. There's so much opportunity and what's going to happen is we will end up getting different little uh, sticking points and those sticking points will drive, um, you know, adoption and growth in different ways. So, you know, one way I see this happening is um, as an example, the music industry, uh, we have um, obviously Fortnite really set the trend and, and with their virtual concerts, um, and so that really triggered a lot of people, you know, like um, Steve Aoki, Dead Mouse. Um, there's, a, there's a big list. I'm sorry if I missed people. <laughs> uh, and that list, you know, they, they've all thought, hey, look, this is really profound. There's an emerging space that we can utilise to, to broadcast our message. Um, and I think what's going to happen is beyond that, they'll find really creative ways uh, to, to position, you know, their element of that value chain um, inside that metaverse. So as an example, they might have a product, might have a new artist, um, and they pop into that virtual space um, and use an NFT to trigger, you know, a, um, let's just say, um, they have a sound, you know, a, a sound device, which, which plays inside that metaverse, um, which has spatial awareness based on the rarity of it, as an example. And then they can actually, you know, broadcast this music spatially to other people um, who might be in reference, in distance, you know, to that to that space. Um, that's one example. And others, um, I think there's there there's so much opportunity here for the creator economy based on UGC. So UGC is uh, is generating content. We've seen that with uh, Minecraft, Roblox, um, and obviously, you know, Fortnite to a degree. Um, this space, in my opinion, is going to be the biggest space in existence. Um, you just see is so massive that what we're actually seeing is we're seeing tools being built by NVIDIA, as an example. We can rig a model in 60 seconds. So um, <laughs> I have a very expensive game development team, uh, and, they're, and they're looking at this going, well, if this gets any better, this can really change the game. And I'm like, okay, well, that's brilliant. It means we can put out games faster. It means that we can enable tools for other people to put out games faster. It means that we can change the, what it means to be a game studio. We can lower costs. We can lower barrier for entry. We can enable other people to create games who would never, ever dream that they could potentially do it. That's incredible. Yeah? So then what we're doing, as an example, is, is giving people the tools, the picks, the shovels, in order to bring their games to blockchain uh, and make it safe, make it fast, make it, you know, uh, easy. Abstract that blockchain layer. We need to do the same for gaming. We need to do the same for all of the different things that are involved with creating games for the metaverse or creating experiences for the metaverse. Um, so as an example, you know, you come into this game uh, or an experience for a brand, um, you're a team up, you've got one guy who's in VR, and he's, you know, navigating the space. And there's another guy who's got AR and he's geolocated, walking around different places. And he's got to find a key. He finds the key, passes it to the guy who has VR, and he goes and puts it in. And he has haptic gloves at the same time. And then there's someone on the desktop that's managing the team, pretending to be some kind of like call center guy, tech support, whatever. All these things can happen. But without the tooling, without making it, feasible for people to, to rapidly build. It makes it really hard for adoption. But all of those different elements, their roles, 
those roles can be monetized. Uh, and then beyond that, you know, if we look at the actual construct of a metaverse, uh, when we go to the future, we it's going to be unlikely we're going to know if we're dealing with a human or a bot. Uh, so as an example, those bots can be owned. If they're performing tasks, uh, whoever created that bot, whether you created the tech, whether you created the uh, AI NLP, you, the, you created the N NPC um, uh, models and rigs, um, whatever you contributed, that entire part might make revenue and gets fractionally divided up for all the creators. So your identity as a creator and what you contribute to the space is, is no longer a terrestrial localized challenge or, or um, exposure. You, you now have exposure to the entire global market um, based on what you, you potentially produce, which has enormous impact. So provided that there are spaces that are done properly and really give people, you know, that power, um, if that power is, is democratized and it's utilized and, uh, and, and it's fair and equitable, uh, then I think we've found exactly where we need to be. Thank you, Matthew. And uh, my last question uh, is also about the, about the future, uh, and it is for Dennis. Uh, Dennis, where do you see the, the NFT industry going from here in regards to the creator economies specifically? Mm -hmm. Okay, so actually, um, you know, current um, market, um, you know, it's not so good. It's not. It, it's not as good as it was at least, you know, half a year, a year ago, or something. And it also was um, pretty crucial for the NFTs because for now people um, started to realize that NFTs should be something bigger, you know, than just just images. Because half a year, a year ago, people just bought some uh, stupid pics, and it was fine. No. It was fine. People even uh, managed to make some money on it. And um, the same as I'm the big fan of the NFTs, I'm the big hater of the stupid pictures inside the NFTs because it has any sense. And uh, in Skydebeam, we were definitely one of the first guys who said that stop it enough. And we started to implement the utility value into the NFTs. Because unless um, this NFT provide you with some utility, it makes no sense. Of course, we can say that, you know, there's some pictures that provide you with the utility of the beauty of this uh, picture. But come on, guys, you know, it's, uh, it's fine for the big pictures. It's fine for the, you know, some artists. But if you're talking about the you know, 10K of the same pictures of some monkey, uh, you know, or a cat, you know, you know whatever, um, it makes no sense. So that's why I think that the um, NFT market uh, will stay um, on the bottom until um, we, as the uh, crypto founders and the, the projects, unless, uh, until we find the way to utilize the NFTs until we uh, start selling the NFTs that will provide users the um, new experience, until uh, we find a way to provide uh, the NFTs with the immense value. Because um, that, from my, of course, um, perspective, is the biggest, um, you know, the biggest driver um, of the NFTs uh, to, to go up. To, to to be needed by people to be utilized at least and if we're talking about the um you know the current market i guess um the first uh, great um implication you know the, the first uh, great ideas how we can use the the nfts probably will be uh, in the metaverses because metaverses are trendy like uh, a lot of projects are there right now and uh, as well, um, people started to understand the necessity of the utility value in the NFTs. So probably both of these uh, ideas will come up into some uh, in something great. And um, we 
currently help a lot of metaverse projects to go cross chain and to um, provide the utility value uh, for the users to you know to implement these NFTs with some uh, with some uh, ideas with some um, use cases with something that can that, that people can do inside the game inside the metaverse and um, I guess this is the future of the NFTs for now. And um, we are definitely going to something bigger. We are definitely going to the, uh, the creator economy, to the um, place where um, we won't be limited by the you know, manufacturers' uh, chains and so on. And a lot of the information will be just you know, digital. And um, NFTs are pretty perfect for that purposes. And uh, we're definitely waiting. We are definitely uh, looking for the... Uh, great digital projects like metaverses with all the items uh, digitalized and um, being uh, used as the NFTs, which can be um, interoperable between different metaverses, which, which may be interoperable between different games as well. Let's say I have a sword in the game. Why can't I use the same sword in another game, right? If these games are partners or something like that. And um, this is the future. So I guess that interoperability Utility value and cross chain is definitely the future of the entities. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, thank you to all the panelists. Uh, we're running a bit behind time and uh, I'm aware of it. So I want to address uh, a couple of questions that were asked in the comment section uh, very quickly. Um, uh, so the first question that we got um, is how do you measure the exact uh, value of? Uh, content. Uh, if anyone, any any of the panelists wants to address it, I guess it's more dependent to the Stan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stan, yeah. <laughs> Stan. So one another time in a nutshell, uh, from my perspective, is potential of this content, potential attention that it can grab, is the first. Uh, the second is the data is it contain uh, content <laughs> that's this content content itself you know so the content should have something inside because that's why it's called content so it's as more it's contained it's more it's valuable the data can be anything so and uh, the rarity yeah how, how easy to copy this and to create um, a lot of things like this or oh, it's something really unique so this is three dimension uniqueness, the data, and the um, potential. Just to add to that, Stan, I agree. Um, that model's, I think, been termed prior as proof of contribution. Um, but beyond that, uh, I think fee structures and commissions come into this. So this can all be put into a smart contract or ESC 1155 as an example. Um, so. You know, if, if you're looking at the exact value of content, well, it's speculative. Um, it's either going to be based on attention, you know, which is, you know, proof of contribution and proof of attention, uh, or it's going to be based on the fractional earnings of a monetization strategy um, as being, I mean, you look at the Canva model as an example. So creators, you know, they, uh, they make stuff and they add it and make it available to be sold and they get a percentage. So it's, it's the same thing. It's just making it automated. It's just making it global. It's making it completely and utterly, um, you know, available across many mediums for different things, which are interoperable. So, uh, yeah, I think you have one or the other there. Yeah, for sure. Actually, it's the, about something like where we are trying to evaluate how, uh, how good is something inside the box, you know, inside the container. I guess it's uh, again depending on the utility value. It's the you know gold ore inside is definitely valuable. If it's a stick, okay, it's fine. It's a stick, but we have a lot of sticks, you know. Do you have perhaps something to add to that, Frank? To 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 to, to the answer uh, to the question asked. <laughs> No, no, I think uh, same. Uh, I, I think same as you said, Dennis, I think it's a uh, utility. It's it's uh, fundamental economics. So if I find more utility in the NFT, I'm going to pay more for it. And all, it also depends on the go-to-market strategy. So there's some brands that give away the NFTs for free just to build an audience, and then they're going to monetize later. So it really depends. 
And I suggest we take uh, one last question and it goes back to what uh, kind of Matthew said, uh, was, was saying about stigmas. Uh, what about those creators that find the NFT community complex? And I guess it, 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 it goes back to uh, how do we demystify uh, the industry uh, that is kind of scary to a lot of uh, especially traditional artists and people not familiar with the space. Anyone wants to take this? Matthew, perhaps? <laughs> well, I think I mean, to start with, I'd like to build on the conversation, but I think um, the, the, best, the best thing that we can do is just is look at our core pillars of what we're trying to do here. So we need to add value. Um, we need to make it safe. And we absolutely have to focus on the user experience. Because at the moment, the, the user experience is, is it's trash. <laughs> I was going to use a different word. But um, it's, it's, um, it's fundamentally very, very clunky. Um, it needs to improve. So, you know, people need to start thinking about um, how do we how do we massively improve um, the, the the tools that plug into wallets to make things significantly more convenient? Um, why? Because when the metaverse actually takes off um, and people are all buying NFTs, you're going to be a user that has no idea about NFTs blockchain, and you're going to have 600 assets that can do a multitude of different things, potentially earn you money. You could lease them out. You can do a whole bunch of stuff. And if that platform doesn't have the tools to enable you to conveniently go, this asset, I can plug that in here. This one I can give to this one and they can go and earn money. This one I can put here and I can lease it out. I can do all these things with all my assets. Nothing is dormant. Nothing is laying there, not doing anything. If we haven't got to that stage, we've failed. So that's the thing is we need to have real people looking at this situation going, the future is going to have data explosions, going to have asset explosions, going to have all these things. How do we make it super easy for the regular user to deal with all of this stuff instead of having to go to this website and go to that website and, and have to think for themselves? The moment that they have to think for themselves and it's not safe, or they have to do something outside of that scope, or they don't have a plug-in, you know, it's too hard. So we have to all work together to visualize what this future is and make sure that it's seamless when we plug all these things together to make that user experience much more robust, powerful, um, and uh, and just just significantly better than what it is. Uh, so it's it's a real challenge. I think that is that is our biggest challenge, along with obviously security, um, because security is it has to be number one. Um, and I think that we, we collectively have to focus on that. Um, incentivize people to be uh, supporting good practices and uh, and bug bounties and those sorts of things, rather than you know exploiting things for profit so um that would be my add to to this one yeah talking about this answer to the people who find nft community complicated and who have like no idea what to propose to them again it comes to the um thought i mean to the idea that people just do not understand the NFT community and the same sometimes um, relates to the brands, sometimes it, it, it relates to the gaming companies. So they, say, they think that um, you can just issue some NFTs with the pictures or with something, like put it on the sale and people will just buy it because that's NFTs. And uh, this is like absolutely, and um, 100% not true. And uh, if you're going to target the crypto community, the NFT community, you should provide your NFTs with something valuable. Uh, it should make sense. It should have utility values. And if for now, you as an artist or as the uh, creator, you don't see your um, way in the crypto world, in the um, NFT community, probably you should dive a little bit deeper 
inside the crypto. Probably you should learn more about the market. You should learn more about how, how it all works. And then you will understand um, the uh, necessities and the, the, the ideas that rule in this community. And that's why, and, and then you will be able to propose something really valuable to the community and, and you know, get successful here. What do you think, guys? Yeah, uh, if uh, uh, Stan or Frank, do you have anything to add uh, to that? <laughs> I think that uh, it's it might seems like a problem about the uh, some communities have difficult language, and it's not always about usability. It's about actually the like the, the global process of diversification. We we come into the technological singularity, you know, and the, the amount of languages and the amount of memes that we do not understand will only increase and never decrease. We will wake up and listen what our daughter or our friends speak and it's like, what? Like, like it's, it's what's happened when the crypto kitties, crypto kitties happen. It's like, what? People mix the crypto kitties in the blockchain to earn some money. Now it seems like so obvious. Crazy, like, right? You not do this, right? To do it today for us, it's like yes, it's like so, so obvious idea, like a thousand project like this. But that time, and it's that time was not so far in the in, in the past. So I think we cannot solve the problem with the uh, with the unification of the language. But what we need to solve is the idea that's um, just our intention to understand and to trust each other. And that's why we have the blockchain. It's like for a trusted society, right? When you trust the technology, you trust the chain and uh, kind of the people who is much more smarter than you who create this, all the crypto algorithms and stuff. But we have to trust. If we will uh, not learn how to trust each other and more of this, if we will not find the tools to be able to trust each other, to, 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 to make our fears less. So we will have a lot of problems. That's why we have polarization. That's might be we have the war. That's might be we have the polarization is all different society, not only in the NFT, right? I mean, I speak about all the cultural differences and, and stuff like that. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, my opinion is uh, we will not find the best, um, you know, the um, user interface for the all communities, and it's okay. Let's say it's okay to not understand something. Today, it's become more and more okay, and uh, <laughs> we just should be able to find the right people who will translate to us, or we just should find the people who we just will trust. No, I totally, totally agree, Karin. Super quick, five seconds. I agree with Matthew. The current consumer journey sucks. It's not going to reach the masses. And uh, I think uh, platforms like the central land or Binance, either they move their ass or Meta will do it or Microsoft will do it before them. And it's going to be a mess. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be a sad story. So better move their ass. <laughs> I really like how direct you are, Frank. Uh, gotta gotta be honest. Um, I, I agree with everything that's been said here, and I think um, the reality here with with the the creator economy is that we have to give people reasons why they would want to contribute. Um, so it's it's not just a, a terminology barrier. It's not just a language barrier. Um, coming back to the comment about utility, so. Most most NFTs aren't, aren't created on chain, which means they're they're not future proof. Um, so you can't contract. You, you basically can't target their attributes or their exclusivity uh, on chain. Um, so that's something our team is like really done really well with. It's not new technology, but we use it, um, and it's very important that. So with the creator economy, you want your your work. You want what you're doing to be future proof. So can it be, con you know, targeted via smart contracts? Um, how does that work? How does that look? Is it is it fully on chain? Um, is that static or dynamic? Uh, what are the parameters? You kind of want to future proof what you're doing. Um, so that's one thing. But I think beyond that, like we need we need we need safety measures. We need insurance policies. We need consumer protection. There's too much bad press um, out there which is creating this kind of like apprehension, you know, for some people 
to get into the market. Um, so once we get this kind of like critical mass of, um, of support model support systems, which is disintermediated, because uh, that's the challenge is that we, at the moment, you know, banks, um, insurance companies, all of these big, you know, pillars of society that we see, they what they do is they facilitate trust in our lives. That's what they do. Um, so a bank, we trust them with our money. We trust them to transact and, and for things to be equitable. Blockchain does that. Um, and it, it does that on, on, on many multi-party levels as well because it's conditionally invent and, and trigger-based. However, people do not quite understand the nature of the blockchain or what it is because it's been used too much as a buzzword. Um, I'll just show people what it can do uh, and, and its limitless potential um, and do it right. So we have to set up kind of like, I don't know if you guys have ever been bowling with kids. <laughs> you have to set up bumper rails so that no matter what they do, they're going to hit a pin. Yeah. Um, that's what we have to do. We have to do that so that um, brands, you know, creators, it's it's not a zero sum anymore. We have to create a, a, a lossless, you know, scenario where the fears, you know, the apprehension is removed, that those consumer protections are supporting, you know, a value-add mechanic. Um, and as um, I think Stan pointed out before, you know, um, not to take away from uh, from Google or Facebook, anyone who's uh, who's been a trailblazer, but we have problems with walled gardens. You know, we have problems with gatekeepers. Um, most of everything that we have that we're connected to in in the world today digitally is um, is, is being you know channeled or run through very very few parties, and this presents a massive issue because that data is how they've built multi-billion dollar, even trillion dollar businesses. So what people need to understand in, the, in terms of the creator economy is um, Google, Facebook, Amazon to a degree. Um, there's, there's many, many, many others. That market share actually adds up to 16 trillion. So the, the, the market share in that encapsulation, that's actually money that's being taken away from you. So if we change that around, we flip it, we can make this a, a much better, you know, distributed equitable model where creators are getting paid what they should. Brands are getting the cut, you know, and the, and the, and the correct uh, monetization models that they should have. And consumers are, are being rewarded either for their intention um, or for their contributions, for their gamified, you know, activities for the interaction for their feedback all of these different things the whole thing is a wheel what we're taking yeah, out people... of that wheel is the middleman who takes 90 percent away from everyone else absolutely i mean people just should see the opportunity you know why did you guys uh, go to the blockchain you know because you saw the opportunity why people just start buying crypto, why they dive in deep into the NFTs and all of that, because they saw the opportunity they want to utilize, uh, because they saw that they can make money, that they can get realized in some way, that, that, they, can, that they can, you know, create some project that will change lives and so on and so on. So uh, it's about the opportunity when people will realize that they can definitely share the, uh, you know, the 16 trillion um, you know, dollars economy, they will dive deep here. Thank you so my, my much. Best, I think the last, yeah, the small yeah, of course. Yeah, it's uh, that's it's actually we're speaking about what will change, and I think the one of the main thing that can shift, and if we will shift from consumer based economy where there's a few players that need you consume a lot in the a lot much more people can see to the creator economy when everyone understand even this small piece of content with a bunch of legs like 10 legs 15 legs if it will give you some value if it will give you some income we will have much more creators so we will have creative society people will think not like i should be one percent of the celebrities who is popular no i i can find my own little niche and i will stop consume i will try to create something and this will be a different society.
for sure. I mean, yeah, amen. I feel like this is a beautiful moment to for us to to finish this this panel discussion. Thank you so much, everyone who participated today. Uh, Frank, Dennis, Matthew, Stan, and of course to everyone who was uh, watching us. Thank you for being with us and for all your questions. And uh, I want to say it's a wrap. Um, see you uh the next uh stream and the next panel discussion and again thank you to all of our speakers thanks very much for having me thank you thank you very much thank you guys, you guys. Awesome. Yeah. Ciao. cheers talk soon bye, bye. 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 bye.